Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I think it's very important for us when we're doing these tutorials for me to show you real world examples, you know, things that you actually see on television. And these techniques you can take and turn around and use them in your own projects just to up the production value of it. And you know, one thing I've really started to do is I've started to watch promos on NBC, ABC, Fox, and, and you know, obviously the big networks to really, like I said, get some good ideas for some techniques to show you guys. And this is one that I saw, and I believe it was in a promo for Castle. A uh, very simple technique, but a very cool technique where the whole picture goes black and white, and then you have this bar move across the screen to highlight the actor's eyes as the camera does a slow zoom in you know, on the shot. And it was a very simple but very cool technique. And when I saw it, the first thing that I thought to myself is that's a technique that I know that I can do right from within my nonlinear editing application. Doesn't matter if you're using Media Composer or Symphony, this technique is simple yet very effective. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do it in this tutorial right now. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid Symphony, obviously command and tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the bin that I have called, appropriately enough, looking up. And all this is, is it's a series of shots with people looking up at the camera. You'll see very cool. And the shot that I decided to use, as you saw in the intro, was this shot of our singer. Now, the reason I chose it was just because I like the purple background. I like sort of the contrast between the talent and the background. And I thought it would just work very well. In rea and in reality, you could really do this technique on any shot where someone looks directly at the camera. Okay, now let's get started here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select this entire clip. And I'm going to hit B on the keyboard again on both Mac and Windows to edit this into my timeline. What I'm going to do is just delete the audio because I don't need it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move down to the point where she looks at the camera, which is right about there. Perfect. What I want to do at this point is I'm going to add in a freeze frame. Now the freeze frame is pretty much going to extend the length of the rest of the shot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit F7 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for match frame. Now if you don't have match frame mapped to your keyboard, no problem. What you can do is you can simply navigate up to the hamburger right here and you'll find match frame right there and find bin right beside it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit F7 on the keyboard and this is the exact frame. You'll see the two frames are identical to each other. And what I need to do now is to do a freeze frame. I'm not sure if I've shown how to do a freeze frame before, but if I haven't, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to clip and I'm going to come down to appropriately enough freeze frame. Now most people right away just pick the duration they want and start going. But I don't do that. The first thing I always do is I come down to a two field freeze frame. Now in this case, I'm working in progressive, but this is a technique that I do when I'm working in interlaced. And I'll always set my freeze frames to be both fields. I always find that that is the best looking type of freeze frame to work. Okay, now like I said, in this case I'm using progressive, so really the field, the fielding issue doesn't really come into play. So I'll just leave it as use both fields. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a 10 second freeze frame. And you'll see, here we go, it's going to ask me where I want to save it to. I'll just simply save it onto the Y drive. Right now it's just going to stick it into looking up because I don't have any other bins open, but I'm just going to stick it in both the sequence and that graphic into the sequence has been here. Now I can close the looking up bin. Very nice. And what I want to do with our freeze frame is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and I'm going to hit B to edit this into my timeline. So now what we have is the move. There we go. And then it's going to go right to a freeze frame. Perfect. Okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire freeze frame by hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and I'm going to press Alt and C on the on Windows option and see on the Mac to copy this clip into the clipboard. Now the clipboard is just the preview window. And I'm going to create a new video layer by simply hitting Control and Y and Windows Command and Y for all my Mac friends out there. And we're just going to drop this into the top layer. Now for right now we're not going to use the top layer, so I'm just going to make sure that we're monitoring the bottom layer. And let's do our freeze frame. But now before I do our freeze frame, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to add an edit here for both layers. Now again, if you don't have add edit mapped to your keyboard, no problem. You can always find it right here. Okay. So now I want to make this shot black and white, but making something black and white is not just as simple as taking the saturation and dragging it out. So again, what we're going to do here, we're going to go into the effects palette. We're going to hit control and eight on Windows command and eight on the Mac. And we're going to come down to the image section here. 
Where are we? There we go, image. And I'm going to select the color correction effect. We're going to drag it and drop it, bottom most layer. And now, of course, most people would think that we're going to come up to Windows and we're going to come to Workspaces and I'm going to select Color Correction, but I'm not going to do that because we're going to do this. We don't need the color wheel, so I'm just going to do this by stepping into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right there or hidden over here on the left side of your timeline right there. Okay. Now, you'll see that with the Hue Saturation Lightness drop down selected. I have Controls, then I have the Master Settings. And I'm just going to come in, I'm going to take the saturation right out just like that. So you see everything is now black and white. But like I said, for me, I always like to, you know, sort of enhance things a little bit more than just dragging that saturation bar out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crush the blacks a little bit here. There we go. Let's just bring the mids up a little bit. And I'm going to bring the highlights up a little bit. There we go. So this, in my own opinion here, and I'm just going to step into the effect here, I find that to be more of an effective and more sort of realistic. You'll see this is more now sort of a, a circle than a gradual fade. Now, of course, if I wanted to adjust that, we could just back off here. Maybe we'll make this, I don't know, minus 10. There we go. That's not too bad. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to now get in and we're going we're gonna to want to animate that bar moving across her eyes. Now, that's why I doubled this up. You'll see on the bottom layer, we have black and white layer above it we have color because we're going to be cropping out her eyes. So let's do that. The first thing I need to do before I do that though is I want to make sure I give enough space to fade in to our look. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump down, let's just say we jump down 24 frames. That's a whole second. So let's jump down 24 frames. And what I'm going to do is hit control and 8 on Windows, command and 8 on the Mac to make sure I have the effects palette up. We're going to come back up to the blend section here. I'm just going to come to Blend right there. We're going to choose 3D Warp. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it and drop it on the top layer. Again, Shift and Y to step into Effects Mode. Let's just make sure that we are 24 frames down here. I'll just go plus 24 again. And I'm going to add a keyframe in there. Now, I want this whole technique to sort of take two seconds to happen, but I'm not going to punch that in just yet. The first thing I'm going to do is set my crop up. Now, I know that I just want to see her eyes. Very cool. Just kind of like that. Okay, now I said that this is going to be about 48 frames for it to establish itself. So let's say plus 48, and I'm just going to simply add another keyframe. Now what we're going to do here is come back to that first keyframe. I'm going to uh, make sure I have the effects palette up here, and if I don't, I'll just step out of effects mode and come back in. There we go. And when we're on this first keyframe, we want to come to the crop section right here. You'll see it's highlighted. And I want to choose the right crop right at the bottom here because what that's, going to, what that's going to do is it's going to grab our little selector tool and it's going to drag it all the way over here to the left just like such. There we go. Now you'll see what we have. If I come back here, I just drag through, we now have our bar going across the screen. Very cool. Now you'll remember it takes a second for it to start to do that. Now that's going to come into play in just a second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove this top layer of, of the freeze frame because I don't actually need it. And what we want to do now is I want to take both of these layers and I'm going to pre-comp them together. So let's hit F9 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for pre-compose or collapse. If you don't have it mapped, remember, you can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. Now, once I've done that, what we want to do before we put the dissolve in is we want to add in our sort of slow camera move. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the 3D warp effect. I'm going to take it. We're going to drag it right down here. We're going to drop it onto our shot. And I'm going to step back into effects mode again. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Now, what we have to remember is that we have that 24 frame uh, gap before we actually have the bar move across. So we want to make sure that our move in is going to start pretty much right away. Why? Well, because remember, we're dissolving into this shot. So we're going to want to have our move already happening. So it's important to keep that in mind. We don't want to have this move start when that bar moves across, even though we've offset everything those 24 frames. So all I'm going to do is add a keyframe at the start. We're going to add a keyframe at the end. And I think we're just going to do about, uh, let's come to scaling here. I'll just turn that on. I think I'm just going to punch in a value of about 115. Now, as soon as I do that, we're going to want to readjust the shot a little bit because obviously we want to make sure that our talent is centered in the shot. Now, you'll see what happens now is the shot plays real time. It's going to come to an extended freeze frame. Then it's going to cut and the transition is going to happen. But now, obviously, this is way too long. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add our dissolve in right away. So we're going to add it in 24 frames starting at the cut. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step back a frame here, and we're going to cut this out. So basically, it's going to freeze, and then right away, it's going to dissolve to black and white with that move in. And there's the bar moving across. So let's play it now. It's going to freeze for a very brief moment, dissolve, and then our bar is going to move across the screen. You'll see a very, very cool technique. And again, you can really use this in anything, like I said, where any talent is looking at the camera. It could even be an animal if you wanted it to be. It doesn't really matter. It's a very cool and very effective technique. Now, I know there's something you're probably thinking. Well, Kev, you know what? Inside the 3D Warp tool, you created your little crop line, which is kind of cool, but I actually want this to be soft edged. I don't want, you know, I want a bit of a feather on the border. How would I go about doing that? Well, believe it or not then, I wouldn't actually use the 3D Warp tool at all to do this move. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to step into this layer here. There we go. And I'm going to step into the pre-comp here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this top layer, which has the 3D Warp actual move on it here, the crop bar move. And I'm just going to remove it by hitting F5 on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Again, if you don't have Remove Effect map to your keyboard, no problem. You can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette. I'm going to come all the way down to Key, and I'm going to use Animat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Animat. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto that top layer. I'm going to step back into Effects Mode, Shift and Y. And now this is going to be a very, very brief introduction to Animat. We're going to get way more into Animat, actually, in multiple tutorials later on. But what I want to show you is how we can do the same technique with a little bit of a soft edge. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to cut out her eyes like I had done before, kind of like that. And what I'm going to do here first is I'm just going to come down to my uh, my color correction effect here because I want to do a zoom back. Now you'll see that the reason I stepped in there is because I don't actually have that tool inside of the effects editor for Animat. So I just step down a layer, zoom back. Why? Well, because I want to make sure that this extends right out of the frame, just like such. So this is kind of what we had before. The only difference, like I said, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further here. Just zoom in a couple times here, and I'm going to hold, let's come back over here. I'm going to hold Control and Alt on Windows, Command and Option on the Mac to call up the little hand tool so I can drag this exactly where I want it to be, right in the middle of the screen. Now, I'm not affecting the actual shot. I'm just affecting the viewport that I'm looking at things in. Now, what I want to do, like I said, is I want to soften this up. So I'm going to make sure that I select the Animat layer. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select the actual element that I've created. And we're going to come back here to the feathering section and just feather this a little bit like that. Very nice. Now what we need to do is make sure that we wait that initial 24 frames. So what we'll do here is I'm just going to zoom back again here. That was a little bit too far. I think that's looking good. Now actually I think I do need to zoom back a little bit farther because I need this to come all the way off frame. So let's do this again. Let's come back to the beginning and hit plus 24 because we know that this is where our little move is going to start. And I believe we had to go for 48 frames. So there's 48 frames. Now you'll see we already have keyframes in here, but that's okay because this keyframe and the last keyframe are our bar extended across the screen. At this point, what we actually want to do is we want to have this come all the way back over here. Now it's important to sort of get this roughly where you're going to want it to go because you'll see that I can't actually get in and punch in any values. So we want to make sure that it doesn't move out too much. You'll see I got it moving a little bit. If I wanted to, if I was finicky about that, I could adjust that. But this is more so for the purposes of me showing this to you. Very cool. What we're going to do is just select this keyframe. I'm going to copy it by pressing Control and C on Windows, Command and C on the Mac. And we're just going to paste it right over top of this one here. So now what we have is a soft edge border that comes in and reveals just the eyes. Very nice. Now, of course, what I can do, because I already animated everything and I just stepped into this effect, if I come back to the beginning now and I hit play, it's going to play through. Pause for that brief second, dissolve in, and guess what? There's our soft edged crop effect created very quickly and very easily. So I hope this is just another technique that I'm showing you that you can take and you can put into sort of your arsenal of tricks that you always have in your back pocket. So when the client says, you know what, let's do something cool here, and it's a shot something like this, you're going to say, you know what, I know a great technique, and you'll be able to do this in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. 
Thanks a lot for watching.